Hi, let me introduce myself again. I'm Dr. William Bukowski. I'm a professor in the Psychology Department of Concordia University in Montreal. I'm also a member of the Center for Research and Human Development. My lab is called the Laboratory for the Study of Interpersonal Relationships and Development. It's a long title. What do we do? We try to study the characteristics of children's experience with their age mates, and we try to understand how these experiences are related to well-being, and also it is how people use their how children use their experiences to deal with issues that come up in their life. Now today I'm going to talk about three phenomena. All of them have to do with change. The first one is what's the evidence for what happens when children make a transition from either the summertime back into school or from one school to another school? What's the consequences of this sort of transition and what happens to people at such a time? The second thing we're going to look at is a phenomenon called the diachronic self. The diachronic self has to do with time in the sense that the diachronic self has to do with people's beliefs about their own persistence, about the idea that six months from now, or a year from now, or two years from now, they'll be roughly the same person they are right now, or roughly the same person they were six months, a year, or two years ago. The final thing I'm going to talk about is a thing called the implicit theory theory. The implicit theory theory says that everybody walks around with an idea in their head about whether or not their characteristics are fixed or malleable. Someone who thinks their characteristics are fixed and that there's nothing they can do about that is said to have an entity view of themselves. A person who seems that their beliefs, their ideas, their, their capacities are malleable, we see those people as incremental. They think that they can improve themselves slowly but surely. So anyways, three things. The effects of transitions, which we've studied, the diachronic self, which we've also studied, and the implicit theory theory, which we've got some research on as well. So, transitions. Children have been out of school, we don't need to tell you that, for some time now, longer in some places than others, and soon they're going to be going back. In Quebec, that will be the middle of May, earlier in some parts of the province than others. Other provinces in Canada, they've already gone back. In Ontario, they might go back a little bit later than they are in Quebec. Same thing for places in the U.S. and in Europe. I mentioned to be once in the introduction that in China, children went back to school uh, in the beginning of March after having been out since the beginning of January. We've done research on the transition from one type of school to another, say elementary schools to secondary schools. We've also done some research on what it's like for people to go back to school in September after they've been away during the summer. If there's one thing that we know, it's that most children, by the time they get to be fourth, fifth, and sixth grade, their lives are pretty stable. Children who are popular will continue to be popular. Children who are accepted will continue to be accepted. Sure, there's going to be some change, some turnover or change in children's uh, friendship relations, but there is during the course of the school year as well. The point I'm trying to make is that as children make this transition back into school, they can assume that most of their relations with their peers are going to be roughly the same as they were before. I'm going to talk about how people can change a bit of that later on, but the most important thing for children to know is that their lives will be largely the same when they go back. Maybe there's things, some things they want to work on in their lives. Maybe there's some things that they think they can do better at. This gives them an opportunity to do so. The most important point I'm trying to make here is that there's more stability than there is change. Now, to be sure, the school context is going to be different. People may have to stay further away from each other. There might be more rules and regulations. But for the most part, relations with others, they're going to be largely the same. Now, another thing that we've studied that has to do with change is a phenomenon called the diachronic self. The diachronic self has to do with persistence. If you take that word apart, you'll see the second part of it, chronic. Chronic means over the long haul. If you have a chronic disorder, it means that it lasts for a long time. The, di the, the diachronic self has to do with persistence. It has to do with someone's belief that they're going to remain the same over time. That maybe they're going to have slightly different interests. Maybe they're going to look a little bit different, but for the most part, they're going to be the same. So, some children have a very strong, persistent sense of themselves. They see themselves as, the as, as being similar over time, even though there may be some changes. That turns out to be a pretty healthy perspective. Other people aren't so sure what's going to, what they're going to be like. They don't know what they might be like six months or a year from now. Having a persistent, strong, diachronic self is important because it protects children from upheavals in their lives. It protects them from negative experiences. We've done some studies where we've looked at the degree to which children who are victimized by their peers will respond negatively. They'll have a negative emotional response to that. 
Children who have a strong diachronic self are affected less so by experiences like victimization than are people who have a very weak diachronic self. What's the point here? Being persistent is important. Why do I mention it now with respect to transitions? Because one thing that helps people have a persistent self is to be in a context that's persistent, to be in a cultural or environmental context that's important. Right now we're not in a situation that's persistent. There's been changes. Uh, what we can do, where we can go, what kind of stores are open, life in our neighborhood. There have been a lot of changes. For some people it might be more difficult for them at this moment of community change or environmental change to maintain a persistent view of themselves. So this could be a moment when maybe some people who otherwise have a strong diachronic self may not have such a may not be, be the same way. I want to tell them that the most important thing about having a strong diachronic self is knowing that the people who are closest to you, your parents, your teachers, that they want you to succeed. They want you to get past the current problems. They want you to be the same, maybe better, than you were before. Now this notion of change also comes up in a third thing that we've studied, and that's called the implicit theory theory. The implicit theory theory says that people walk around with some ideas about themselves, about whether they have some fixed characteristics or whether they have characteristics that can change. So for example, maybe someone sees themselves as pretty good in school. Someone who has an entity view of themselves will say, I've done well in school, I'm going to continue to do well in school, I'm smart, I have some capacity to do well, and I'm going to stay that way. A person with an incremental point of view is going to say, hey, I can change myself. I can make myself better, better. I can go beyond what I see is my current capacity, and I can improve myself, maybe in an incremental way, step by step. This means that people, for example, who have don't do so well in school, if they have an entity view of themselves, they see themselves as stuck. If they have an incremental view, they see themselves as someone who can improve themselves. Having an incremental view of oneself helps people deal with problems. It helps them say, I can change myself. Yes, I'm going to be largely the same person later on, but I can make myself better. Why do I mention this now? Because going back to school, once we make that transition in a couple of weeks or whatever it is, maybe it's happened already, this gives people an opportunity to engage the incremental view of oneself and to make themselves better. Okay, I've covered three different topics. What have I tried to say? Transitions. Uh, maybe children are going to be a little bit anxious when they get back to school, but believe me, for the most part, people are going to be about the same as they were before. Second thing, I used a phenomenon that maybe you've never heard of before, the diachronic self. Having a persistent view of yourself, knowing I'm going to be roughly the same in two years as I am right now, or six months, or even two months as I am right now, is a healthy thing. It helps people deal with challenges. Third thing, the concept which distinguishes between the entity and the incremental self. Transitions give people an opportunity to change themselves, to make themselves better, to work on things that they see that are weaknesses. And our studies have always shown that children who have an incremental self and who maybe think of themselves as having some problems are going to be a lot better off than people who see themselves as having some weaknesses and having an entity view. So here's an opportunity to engage those incre incremental tendencies and uh, turn yourself into a better person. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed our talks and uh, wish you well with everything. Thank you.